This is the Extra Point Podcast. During this podcast, we will dive deeper into our Sunday teaching and share practical next steps for your faith journey. Now, let's kick off the Extra Point. Hey, welcome to the Extra Point. I'm Cheryl Ross, the Next Steps and Discipleship Pastor here at Southridge Church, and I'm with Scott Beha, our lead pastor. And before we go any further, Further, I just want to make sure that if you haven't liked or subscribed to this podcast that you do so. That way you don't miss out on any new content between this and our Sunday services, our Sunday teachings that we load. Um, This is just another opportunity where we dive deeper into that. And so we want to make sure you hear those Sunday teachings as well. Um, But this week we had what we called a For the Future Sunday. It is something that we're going to be doing regularly, periodically throughout the year over the next couple years as we um, continue to raise funds for our, um, to pay off the debt of our church. And um, as you said on Sunday, for the future is not about money. That's right. Money is, you know, a means to it, to the end. But talk to us a little bit about that because I know a lot of people may hear those things yeah. and think, oh, it is just about money. What do you mean it's not about money? Yeah. So when I say for the future is not about money, here's what I mean. For the future is not about money in the sense that I am trying to get our church financially um, free so that way those of us within this church can be the beneficiaries Mm -hmm. of that financial freedom. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to make us financially free so that way the staff can get raises. I'm not Mm -hmm. trying to get us financially free so that way we can buy bigger and better cameras and lights and anything like that. So that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. We're not the personal beneficiaries of this. Mm -hmm. The the th- the reason why it's not about money is because it's all about people, and the mm-hmm. money is an ends to a, the means to an end, mm-hmm. with the end being people that we want to be able to bless people um, in our community. And mm-hmm. I I mean just when I start thinking honestly, when I start thinking about us being out of debt and there being seventy to a hundred thousand dollars to pump into ministry, mm-hmm. whereas we're used to doing ministry on a shoestring budget. Yeah. Um, I I honestly almost don't even feel equipped to be the leader of that because I I wouldn't even know where to start mm-hmm. to go. All right, let's dream really big because now money is not going to be an issue. Like we right. can do all the stuff. Like yeah, there's there as I was thinking about it yesterday. I was thinking about it last week in preparation. Mm-hmm. I go, man, I don't even know. Like I feel like really. <clears throat> qualified to like lead the charge to being financially free and then on the other side of it I go like oh my gosh then we got to start doing ministry and Mm -hmm. then I go like oh man I I feel like underprepared for that because we've not been in that situation Mm -hmm. before right it's always been like well we do this event we do it like with as little expense as possible Mm -hmm. to have the biggest impact possible but now you're talking like okay if you have 70 to a hundred thousand dollars that you can pump into your community what would you do Mm -hmm. that's a really hard question to to answer and Mm -hmm. so that's what we'll be praying about over the next couple of years and that's why it's not about money it's about those people there's kids within driving distance of our church that go to bed hungry yeah there's kids that you know um this is not like There's always a a balance whenever you're telling a story about how you meet needs. Mm Because, listen, this is not about patting people on the back. Right. Like, my men's group this past week was aware of a need Mm -hmm. um, in our community. And we went and met that need. That's um, cool. Together. People sent me money. I went and found the stuff. And we blessed the family. Just my little men's group. Yeah. And, like, that's, you know, that's that's what we want to do. There's people in our area right now that their kids are wearing shoes to school every mm-hmm. week that don't fit them yep. or their shoes have holes in them or they, they don't have clothes that fit. Mm-hmm. There, there's, I mean, there's all these problems. There's, and the yeah. reason why those families are in that situation is because the parents, they don't have proper training to go out and get work. They don't have mm-hmm. proper ch- uh, access to child care. Mm-hmm. All sorts of issues that yeah. the church is meant to be the place that fixes those problems. Yeah. That's what we want to do. Now I know 70000 to to $100,000 a year doesn't, you know, change the world, but it changes somebody's world. That's yes. the deal. Yeah. It's not going to be, you know, that's that's not a, a, a 
you know, a million dollars, but that's a lot of money to go and go, mm-hmm. okay, let's, why don't we get partnerships with many, many schools and go, listen, mm-hmm. how do we help bring life to your people that go to your yeah. school to your, like, there's people like that. Um, and, you know, and, and so it's just, that that's why it's not about money. It's not about mm-hmm. money. It's not about money. It is about getting free so that way we can go and bless people. Right. Right. And, Money is just a means to an end, mm-hmm. right? It's the same thing when you, your paycheck's really not about money. It's really right. only what you, that money represents that you can go and do with it. Mm-hmm. That's why I say it's not about money. Yeah, absolutely. So you shared from, you know, our core value of we are better together because we know that that's, that's a fact. Like 100%. it's scriptural, but it's also a fact. We all know that. Like, in our group last night, we shared stories of how, you know, things were easier when we had a lot of people to do it yeah. um, and those kind of things. And so um, we are better together. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 says two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. Yeah. And you did a really cool demonstration. Um, it where felt like a little bit of furniture. organized chaos. <laughs> it was great. Um, it was fun. It felt like I was back with the kids or youth again. Um but it is it's just a simple way to like for us to really see yeah. and remember that because i think in moments there are a lot of times where we want to say um no this, this would just be easier if i just do it myself yeah you i know? learned that lesson yesterday <laughs> i screwed our our second service up because i did that <laughs> right like we we never yeah never have someone do as much in a service as what i did mm-hmm. on sunday and because i did that I forgot to do a part of the service at the end that I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to recognize one of our staff members that had retired last year, and I completely missed it because I was the only one. Mm-hmm. I was, I did all aspects of the service except for I didn't sing, mm-hmm. and so therefore I missed, messed it up because I did it on my own. Mm-hmm. And had I had more people involved, then it's not just one person that has to remember, then it's a group of people, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, that's, that's what mm-hmm. that illustration was doing. Yeah. It was like, look, when... When Jeremy and Josh had to go and do that by themselves, Mm -hmm. you know, it took a minute and 20 to a minute and 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. When the groups of three did it, it was like 30 seconds and 38 seconds. Mm -hmm. Because, and we all know this, Mm -hmm. and yet we don't always live this out. We live in isolation. We try to do stuff on our own. Like I told the story about when I went to Rural King. Mm -hmm. I walked around for like 15, 20 minutes trying to find drain um, line, whatever that, I don't even know mm-hmm. what that stuff's called, because I didn't want to ask for help, yes. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, how many people come into church every single week, mm-hmm. and they don't want to ask for help, and so they stay stuck right. just walking around the rural king of their life, yeah. going, I can't find what I'm looking for, and there's like literally dozens upon dozens of people here that mm-hmm. would love to help you, Yeah. and so like even though we were talking about this in regards to if everybody will start giving, mm-hmm. then we'll do this faster and be more efficient with all of this. It applies to any area of your life. Yeah. Like if you're dealing with anxiety or depression, there's people here that can help you. There's services that you don't have to do it on your own. If you're trying to deal with addiction, you don't have to do it on your own. You're, yeah. We're always going to be better together. Absolutely. I mean, gee, like, yes, there are things that you do by yourself. Mm-hmm. We see this modeled in Jesus' life. Jesus goes away to pray. Yeah. Jesus goes away to have alone time. Everyone needs mm-hmm. alone time. Yeah. Uh, like I had, you know, yesterday I got home um, from church. I was did not feel well. I, sl- I slept. And then when mm-hmm. I woke up, I, I stayed in bed for like another two hours just by myself. Everybody needs that. Mm-hmm. But because I did that, then I was able to, okay, then comes the time that, all right, let's be a little productive. So I get my two kids. I give them responsibilities, I have responsibilities, and we start getting stuff done around the house. It's better when all three of us are doing it rather than just me. So, like, we need time by ourselves to recharge, but when it's time to get stuff done, Mm -hmm. it's normally always better to have people do it with you. Yeah, absolutely. So you shared from a story in Genesis 14, which is is something that I don't know that we – any of us have heard a sermon on, but it was about, you know, all these different kingdoms. The, the kings yeah. um, made alliances to go yeah. against, and it was four against five, and it seemed like the odds would be stacked against the four, right? Yeah. But it, we see that um, 
when alliances are made and they're the, they're good and we come together that you can you can beat the odds yeah. right you can go against the odds and still come out better and that's how we kind of feel about you know this debt that yeah. we've had and that has been a part of this church for so long yeah. like it can seem like the odds are stacked against us but when we come together then we can actually overcome the odds and um you shared about the capture of of Lot, which was Abram's Abraham's nephew, mm-hmm. um, Lot, and how Abram decided not to go and try to rescue him by himself, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he mobilized three hundred eighteen men to yeah. go and do that. Um, how can we see that in our own lives of of yeah. practically? making sure that we are going like that we're not trying to do those things on our own that we're getting the people involved that yeah. need to be involved um because even this like he didn't go and like get just anybody right like he went and he got the the men who were trained got the right people right the the lesson in Genesis 14 which this is I'm telling you I've never heard a sermon from Genesis 14 Mm-mm. and I was asking God all week how in the world I ended up at Genesis 14 because <laughs> I'm going well, I, nobody preaches from this Lord this is just yeah. this is a story that's in here because it actually happened and it carries the story along like what mm-hmm. do you I don't know but like the 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 thing that you get from Genesis 14 is that when there is a battle to be fought you take people with you that are prepared for that battle mm-hmm. right that's why the five kings joined up that's why the four kings joined up that's why Abraham took the 318 warriors and he probably had help from those other um, defeated nations as well Mm -hmm. Um, in Genesis 14 you get it when there's a battle to be fought you don't fight it alone you go with somebody so whatever that battle is for us as a church right now the battle is a financial issue it is the debt of this building and the general giving of our congregation we don't go at this alone Mm -hmm. we go at it together and we can overcome the odds that look insurmountable. Like, mm-hmm. for a church that most years does not make budget, to say, all right, we're going to continue to try and make budget and pay off over a million dollars in three years. That's We're going to raise an extra 333 dollars mm-hmm. to $360,000 a year in a church that already doesn't make budget. That yeah. sounds crazy. The only way it's possible is when everybody gets on board. Mm-hmm. Nobody fights alone whenever they're serious about winning. Right. And that's with your mental health, that's with your addiction, that's in your relationships. Yeah. Nobody fights alone when they're serious about winning. Absolutely. So good. So um, with that, you know, our vision is to be a church that our community can't live without. And um, we know that we are better together, that we can't do this without you. And so we thank you for those who have already committed your support to the For the Future campaign. Um, If you have not yet or you want to find out more information about that, you can find that out at our website, southridge.org, or going to src.life as well. Um, But we are just thankful for you, and we'll be back here next week with our new series, Um, You've Got the Wrong Guy, and we can't wait to dive deeper into that and give you more practical next steps for your faith journey. Thanks for tuning in to The Extra Point. Be sure to subscribe to the Southridge Church Podcast and tune in every Wednesday for another episode of The Extra Point.